behaviors. Stress and worry on the job can be harmful. They cause physical and emotional problems that may damage both your health and your performance. Stressors. The things that are turned on our emergency, the things that turn on our emergency system are called stressors. We react to stress depending on our ability or, or inability to handle stressors. Stress-related reactions sometimes include extreme behaviors such as the desire to flee. Oh, that was me. Well, I wouldn't have run from there now. Okay. I can't face it. You know, I only want to face my problems, especially after coming down and broke. I don't want to go home. I don't want to look at their faces now. I want to flee. You know, but I found that even after I got sober, I still wanted to flee. Amen. So it must have been a part of my emotional makeup anyway, huh? See, the thing that I had to discover that after getting high, some of the same things I did while getting high, I did sober. That's the thing that freaked me out. And the thing that made people who've been around me that I hurt during my addiction, they thought I was getting high again because I had that personality and I never knew it sober. I move real fast, I talk real fast, I do an exam. So I was still doing the same thing sober. They were like, oh, he high again. No. I'm learning this about me too. You know? I thought I only got high and wanted to fight. No, I realized I didn't have to be high and want to fight. You just hit the wrong plug, I'm fighting. Uh -huh. Just that simple. That's why I had to learn all these anger management, stress things. I mean, I went through it all, people. Believe me. All right, where we leave off. Inability. Stress related reactions sometimes include extreme behaviors such as desire to flee, attack, approach, or avoid. To better understand stress, let's put the subject of stress in the ABC process. Now, activating events. Here we are. Activating events are, stress are stressors. There are three levels of stressors in our activating event. Level one is chronic stressors, such as racism. You always feel like somebody hates you because you look up. Amen. Or poor living conditions. Man, no, I shouldn't be like this. I'm that brother she who talk, man, I ain't never lived like this. Yeah, I'm not. But have you looked in the mirror and asked yourself, who got me here? Who got me here? You want to blame everybody around you but the person in the mirror. Amen. That's where the best place to start. Then noise. They can't handle noise. Wait a minute. You sleeping out on the street. Sirens, cars, horns, birds, crickets. You know, everything is out there, but you can't handle noise. You come in here and hear one person snore. Man, you got to shut him up. What you sleeping on the street, man? Why don't you tell that man from Cricket to shut up? Because you can't find him. <laughs> All right, level two type stressor or activating event of a stressor. Major life events. Weddings. Oh, whoo. Tell me about it. Yeah, you hear the man say, huh? Divorces. Oh, yeah. Because divorce is called a living death. Amen? Moving. You've been comfortable somewhere for so long, now you got to move. Job loss, level three. Daily events or hassles, traffic delays, grouchy bosses, unwanted phone calls, consistent interruptions. All right, your beliefs about uh, the stressful event. Here we go. The common negative be self-talk. I can't take this anymore. Because no matter what happens to you, you believe, I can't take this anymore. Somebody say, hello, I can't take this anymore. Good morning. I can't take this anymore. You just, your, your belief, I'm sorry, because I met somebody who like that. So I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't take this anymore, or this is just too much for me to handle. All right? Here's C. Feelings or emotions related to your thoughts about the activated event. These feelings are the consequences of our beliefs and thoughts about activated event. Common feelings are expressed as feeling stress or pressure. So, all that. A and B activate the event, what you believe about it will put pressure on you. Finally, your behavior, or what we do when we feel stress or pressure. Common kind of negative D's include drinking alcohol, Amen. using prescription drugs, values, etc. Amen. Uh, abusing street drugs, overeating, or not eating at all, acting out with violence. Amen. When we are in a stressful situation, our behavior or how we handle the situation determines whether we are handling stressors or whether we are being controlled negatively will negatively affect us by the stressful situation. All right, we're going to stop there. We're going to hit some scriptures.
concerning these treasures. Amen? But before I even do that, I want to go to a God in the Bible. I've been asking God, I said, God, show me somebody in the Bible who handles this. And he already told me, you already got it. Remember we studied uh, the story of God's house? And I told you about Nehemiah, so let's go to the book of Nehemiah. Book of Nehemiah. Blew me away when I was a man. And when I had to look up all the meanings in the Hebrew, this blew me away. I want you all to pay close attention to this story. And see if you see yourself in this story. Imagine yourself stress-free now. Imagine yourself, you had a dream, you prayed about it, God answered the prayer. You started the vision. You prepared yourself for that vision. Me and my chapter 6. Yeah. You started the vision. Everything is working out fine. The plan is going fine. You got a new job. You got everything is going. You got a new apartment. You got money every day in your pocket. Everything is going fine. Amen? But then guess what happens? Take up the test. Amen. So let's go to Nehemiah chapter 6. I found my own little interpretation on it to bring it for our understanding. But I want y'all to see how this guy handled a stressful situation. There's nobody I can compare better with this stress. It started blowing my mind. I was howling in my own bedroom over this one. Let's start at uh, verse. Let's start at verse 1. Now, it came to pass when Sam back. Oh, pay attention to these things. I told you names are very important in the Bible. When Sam Ballard and Tobiah and Gisham, the Arabian, oh, uh, see, I love that. the Arabian, and the rest of our friends, yeah. no, enemies, heard that I had built, heard that I got a new house, heard that I got a new job, heard that I got a new wife or husband, when they heard these things. Yeah. <laughs> and that there was, wait a minute, wait a minute. Who is what? 
saved. Now he born again, supposed to be your brother. Then you got the unsaved. So you got the sin that God has sinned upon you, right? The God is talking about that God is good, and you got somebody named Gisham raining upon your parade. So you got three types of people coming at you when you're doing something right. You got the religious, <clears throat> you got the saved, and you got the unsaved. When you know things are going right in your life, you watch when the religious come at you. No, honey, you can't come in here. Your dress got to be up by hundred below your knee. You can't wear pants in here. Amen. You got the saved who always talk about, bless me, Lord. How you doing, brother? Yeah. Then you got the unsaved. They ain't never got no good for you. They want to bring you your parade. They want to drag you back out. Let's keep reading the story now. So now y'all got that understanding. Verse 3. And, first, no, go back to verse 2. Then, that sin thou and get some sin unto me, say, come, let us meet together in some one of the villages to play the ono. But they thought to what? Do me mischief. They want to kill him. Verse 3. And I sent messengers unto them, saying, I'm doing a great work. I'm doing a great work. So that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease? Y'all not hear me? Uh, yeah. Why should the work cease? Why should I leave it and come down here to you? He told him, I'm not coming on no. Why should my work, that work stop, and he come down to you? And I know you got some mischief for me. You just try to stress me out. Oh no, I'm not going. <laughs> I'm not going. Let's keep reading the story. <laughs> oh no, tell him oh no. Now what? Verse 4. Yet they sent unto me four times after that story, and I answered them after the same sort and say, now, oh no, I'm not coming. <laughs> you got to tell people who don't have no good for you. Oh no, I'm not coming. They call you all the time. Wait till y'all start doing good. Family will be ringing the phone. Old friends will be coming out the footwork. Won't you come down? And you got to let them know, oh no, I'm doing a good work. Oh no, Amen. why should I when you ain't got nothing designed for me but mischief and stress. Oh no! Amen. Oh y'all not hear me in here. Now watch this, verse 5. Then sent Sandal and his servant unto me in like manner a fifth time. They ain't giving up. Ain't that devil boy persistent? A fifth time with an open letter in his head. With an open letter. See, an open letter means this. In those days, they didn't have stamps or seals or envelopes. So what they would do is take wax, melt it on the letter, and the authority would seal it with his seal. So if that seal was broke, that means somebody peeped and got news. Even today, if you open somebody mail, it's a federal offense, you get locked up. So when they bring in an open letter, he automatically knew. This ain't right. It ain't no authority in it. So what are you told? You bring in an open letter to me? You must be crazy. Oh, no. <laughs>
attacked by all three before. Verse 9. For they all made us afraid, saying, Their hands shall be weakened from the work that it be not done. Now, therefore, O God, strengthen my hand. Afterward, I came unto the house of Shemia, the son of uh, Delilah, whatever her name is, son of Mechawiwa, whatever, <laughs> who was shut up, and he said, Let us be together in the house of God, where went the temple, and let us shut the doors of the temple, for they will come to slay thee. Yes, in the night will they come and slay thee. Verse 11, And I said, Should such a man as I run or flee? And who is there? Who is there? That being as I am, would go into the temple to save his life. I will not go in. Verse 12, And look, I perceive that God had not sent him, but that he pronounced this prophecy against me, for Tobiah said Ballad had hired him. So now, somebody, they're going to hire some people to discredit you. Amen. Are y'all ready to move forward? Amen. Are y'all ready to get out of your situation? Yes. Now, do y'all realize it's going to take a battle for you to get out of that thing? You're going to have to go through fear. Hopefully you won't no more, knowing that God is the only one you need to fear. You had to go through stress because that ain't nobody gonna believe you. That's when you got to believe it for yourself. You got to make yourself encourage yourself. Amen? I'm telling you, if you're being attacked, you're in the right place. Now, I'm not talking about your personal choices to sin. That ain't being attacked. Or the devil ever me. No, that is not a personal attack. That's your choice. I'm talking about when you finally throw all that stuff away and then they come at you because now you pray. You reading your word, you know what I mean? You hanging out with the right people, you doing the right things to get a job, you doing the right things to work around this ministry, and all of a sudden it comes everything your way. Get away from that concept that being in Christ, things are going to run smooth. No, you open the door for attack. The moment you said, Jesus, the devil said, I'm coming. And I'm coming hard. There have been days I sat there and wish I had never read this thing. But now I'm in it, because the Bible will either bring you closer to God or drive you crazy. I'd rather get closer to God. I have watched people literally went nuts over reading the Bible. Had three Bibles open. Stressed. Because they want to compete with someone. They want to have more knowledge than someone else. They want to have revelation. Instead of just leaning on God and love. That's it. It is so simple. Love, forgive. That's it. The rest we can get to heaven and ask the Lord, were we right or were we wrong? All that stuff in the day and the holiday, now you stress, sweating over God ain't, God ain't in that. That's all flesh. Amen? It's all flesh. Now here's the background on some of that. Seth Bell and Tobiah were desperate. The wall was almost complete and their efforts to stop its construction were failing. So they tried a new approach, centering their attacks on Nehemiah's what? Character. You know, when you have a character attack, you're doing something good. They attacked him personally with rumors, deceit, and false reports. Personal attacks hurt, don't they, people? And when the criticism is unjustified, it is easy to despair or get stressful. When you are doing God's work, you may receive attacks on your character. When you're doing God's work, you ain't going to receive or receive attacks on your character. Follow Nehemiah's example by trusting God to accomplish the task and by overlooking unjustified insults. Amen? Amen. All right. Let's finish reading this out. Uh, we stopped at verse 12. We go to verse 13. Therefore, was he hired that I should be afraid, so was he hired that I should be afraid and do so, and sin, and that they might have matter for an evil report, that they might reproach me. My God, think thou upon Tobiah, and said thou, according to these their works, and lo, the prophetess, look at that, must have been a woman, the prophetess, Noah died, now they hired a prophetess. Hello. <laughs> and the rest of the prophets, that would have put me in what? Fear. Ah, you get this, ain't you, brother? Yeah. Amen. So that the walls were finished, and in the 20th and 5th day of the month, Ilu, Ilu, in 50 and 2 days. Now, they won't hire people to stop. Things around here may try to stop. But I need you to know here at Friendship, we're going to push you forward. We're either going to 
gonna push you forward and push you out. Amen. Amen. Because we're gonna stick to the rule. Y'all get angry, y'all get bad. We don't owe you nothing. We don't owe you nothing. We didn't die for you. We didn't raise from the dead for you. So we don't owe you nothing. We gave you something. Called a bed, some food, some clothing. We did what the Lord told us to do. Now it's up to you from us strengthening you through the word of God and through natural means that you get up on your two feet, men and women. Amen? Amen. 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 And start dropping these emotional things that are hindering you from going forward. All right, everybody got their sheep? If you got one of these, I told you I'd like giving them out no more. I don't, I don't, I'm just not. But we're going to read the scripture. Let's go to, uh, we already read Matthew 11. Let's look at Proverbs 3. Then we're going to come to a close. Proverbs 3, we're going to read the scripture replacement thoughts concerning stress. Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs <laughs> chapter 3. But I want y'all to remember, if things come your way, go to Judah. Go to, go to, go to a Samaria. But don't stop at Ono. Because Ono is going to make you get into grief. And grief is going to bring stress upon you. Think about the praise of God. See, pray, what is watching too? You praise him and watching is also a term for praying. Jesus asked his disciples, would you watch for me one hour? And what they do? Fell asleep. Hello. So sometimes when things are coming apart, you, you need to realize I need prayer. I need to stop this thinking, thinking, and get in prayer. Amen. Proverbs chapter 3. I feel a heaviness in this room. But that's okay. I want one person. I told the Lord, I don't care if there's one. Grab it. That's all. I'm going to give me a crown of heaven, Jack. One. I'm going to be dancing on the streets of gold. I can't wait. I'm like Paul almost. I'm betwixt, as he said. Amen. <laughs> Whether to be with the Lord or stay here. Because I love Jesus. Y'all don't love Jesus? Amen. I mean, I love Hey, come on, sister. Proverbs 3, verse, what is it, 5? Five? Five. Amen. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and do what? Lean not unto thy own understanding. When stress come on you, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. What's the next one? 2 Corinthians 7, 5, 7. 2 Corinthians 5, 7. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Amen. Read it again, brother. For we, Loud. For we walk by faith, not by sight. There you go. For we walk by faith, not by sight. The problem with that half the time is most folk ain't got their faith built up. They don't even know what faith is because we keep looking for some tangible thing we can touch. But faith starts in here, people. Faith starts right here. If you can believe God that you're going to get a plate of food down friendship or a place to sleep at friendship, then why can't you believe God for your success? Amen. Why can't you believe God for a job? Why can't you believe God for all your necessities? Because he also said, stop worrying and stressing about it. If you lean on me, trust in me, I'm going to give it to you. Amen? Amen. Psalms 55, 22. Give your burden to the Lord. Read it out. Give your burden to the Lord and he will take care of you. Give your what to the Lord?